Um, we are now going to listen to the true experts here. So we've got Natalia Dittmer with Tumblum Lumber in the Pacific Northwest. She leads all their social media efforts. And we got uh, Mr. Isaac Oswalt, uh, founder of 21 Handshake, um, who helps companies probably in this room as well, um, put together strategies and tactics for their social media. So of all the things we talked about, Natalia, where would be the first place to start if we have people in the audience that are saying, okay, I am. I am, I am still a skeptical lumber man or woman, right? Um, where should I start if we want to get something, if we want to gain more momentum and put a strategy in place? I think you start by understanding that social media isn't about selling two by fours on your Facebook page. Uh, back to what you started this whole conversation with. Uh, for us, for Tumalum Lumber, we look at social media as an extension of our brand. It's part of how we're branding ourselves in the marketplace. Uh, you know, we want to attract the next generation, certainly want to speak their language, want to communicate with them in a way that they are comfortable communicating. And so we use social media uh, platforms to do that. And, uh, and we're using that to uh, create a strong brand in the marketplace and not one that's false, mind you. We're not trying to put something out there that isn't true or honest content about our company. What we're trying to do is share our story. And we have a great story to tell. I love to share it. And so social media is a really good platform uh, for us to do that. So again, it's, I, I think the understanding of what it's actually doing for you uh, in terms of a branding perspective. Yeah, it basically ties into uh, the culture conversations of yesterday. So what you said there, I liked, is you cannot fake that we are these people and we're mm -hmm. this great culture, and you can't fake that anymore if you could in the past anyway. Mm -hmm. um, social media is going to put that um, to the forefront, and that's you know very compelling. Whether you're looking to hire new talent um, that's you know younger than your current staff, or you're looking to engage more people. Closer, perfect. Here, all right, all right. Um, but yeah, it's just one way to um, show the one-on-one -on -one interactions that happen in your business every day, where you're giving value, you're building a relationship, you're making somebody feel good. You can take that one-on-one -on -one interaction and with Natalia taking a picture or a small video and putting that on Instagram, that has infinite possibilities to reach new people from that one-on-one -on -one interaction. So that's pretty powerful too. Natalia, let me ask you, I, we went through it briefly, but can you tell the story that I think really ties into what Hancock Lumber practices and preaches, which is it's not, it's not only external, but it's also internal. Can you tell us what you posted recently about when, <clears throat> one of your employees, uh, Pam? Mm -hmm. Pam Webster uh, has worked for Tumalum Lumber for 30 years. Uh, her work anniversary was just this past week. And uh, in 2017, we took the stance of wanting to uh, promote our employees in a different way by using video. So, Previously, on a work anniversary, we'd put a post up, usually just a graphic with their photo. Um, but this year, we took it to another level, and we do videos, which, mind you, I use my phone to do all the videos. So it's not a big, complicated, you know, not bringing in this big video team. It's just that handy little tool you have in your pocket works great. So what I do is I interview uh, coworkers of the person whose anniversary it is and get the coworkers to tell our customers, why they like working with this person, what makes this person great, why are they wonderful. Uh, Pam Webster, 30 years, she's got a lot of friends in this industry, she's got a lot of friends in our community, um, the store employees love her, and so we did a video for her, uh, just like we do for all the employees, but highlighted a little bit more because of her 30 years. And I think when you watch the video, it's a pr pretty compelling tool on why people are so important in this industry. Um, back to, you know, one of the videos that, that Bradley showed is, you know, maybe Home Depot's cheaper, mm -hmm. but can you even find an expert in there? Can you find someone to talk to? When somebody comes into Tumalum Lumber, Pam is like the face of our company. She is right out there, and not only is she talking to them, she knows their kids, she knows their grandkids, she's in the community, she's volunteering with them side by side, she's giving them hugs. I mean, this is the kind of person you want to do business with. Absolutely. And so when we use those videos and put that out there on our social media, people start to see our people now. So again, it's who I want to buy my two by fours from. It's not that I'm selling a two by four on Facebook. It's that, oh, this is a great group of people. And as people start to see these videos, they understand the culture of our company and who works for us. And, and again, it's a powerful story to tell. And I love to share that story with our customers through social media. That's awesome. I mean, one of the best 
parts about this industry is how relationship driven it is. Mm -hmm. And that is the one thing that I don't want anybody to forget that the Home Depots and the Lowe's, they cannot compete with you on that, mm -hmm. on that program. Like you're gonna kill them there. Um, the s social media can help you articulate that to more people uh, than ever before. And I honestly believe I mean, I think a lot of you say, hey, my, tr my truck driver is one of our best salespeople because he has a lot of contact, or him or her has certainly have a lot of contact. Well, gosh, using some of the content that you do, some of the frequently asked questions that you, I know that you're, you're picking up, mm -hmm. you are now arming everybody in your organization to build a relationship by being able to provide content that maybe somebody else created. Maybe I'm a salesperson and I can't get through to this person, but maybe they'll like Pam. So I'm going to share with them a couple of posts on Pam and stuff like that, and and you know you can get a lot more people selling for you mm -hmm. um, by documenting the people that you have, humanizing the brand, um, and putting that on the social media channels. Isaac, let me ask you a question. We talked about this, and you had a little riff on. I think all of our all of our behaviors in our personal life that often we think doesn't translate in our professional lives, which comes down to how long we're willing to wait to get information. And we, okay. were, we were kind of joking, we met up uh, two days ago. You did not run a car, so you took? Uber. Okay. Um, while I was there, I, this lav mic that I bought for myself, uh, my wife bought it, and it, it delivered 24 hours later from Amazon, Amazon Prime, and we talked about Narcos on Netflix. When you look at those, and just the immediacy of Netflix, of Uber, of Amazon, which, if not one or more, all of us are using, what does that say about our behavior and our willingness to wait? Well, there's companies now out there that, you know, what's the, what does is, what is Uber and what does Amazon mean to the business? Russ talked about this a little bit yesterday. What it really means is 80, you know, it's an $80 billion company, Uber, that's based on not really a cab company, but time, right? So time, if you want to build a relationship with me or maybe some of the younger generation people, Valuing their time first and foremost is is, uh, is is very important, right? So if I can get something done in 10 seconds that used to take me 30 minutes, that's that's a great that's a great thing. The one thing we your market has less patience for the information that they want to learn, see that they've and it's because of this, because it's instantaneous, right? So our the challenge and the opportunity because I look at each one of your organizations and you have so many great stories, you have so much experience, talent that is not getting articulated as well as it possibly could be and delivered in a 24-7 environment where they can build value, build trust, build, build authority um, and, those, and you can do it on your prospect's time, your customer's time, your market's time versus waiting for the salesperson or somebody to call you back on a question. Like, uh, you know, if somebody wants the information at 9.30 at night because they just put their kids to bed and they've got a few minutes to look at the iPad before, um, you know, before the next day starts, your salespeople typically or your, your organization's not working at that hour. Um, take what you would say face to face, the education, the information, the demonstration, and don't forget the entertaining part of your people because that's a part, big part of the relationship, right? Take what you would do face to face and deliver it to them in the mediums where you can reach them when you can't be there face to face. Natalia, can you share a little bit about the event that you put on for your contractors and the marketing challenges you faced and how you were helping them help mm -hmm. themselves? Uh, anybody deal with contractors who you think maybe don't do a really great job at marketing themselves? Huh. I mean, these guys they are working their tails off out there. And a lot of times it's a spouse doing the bookkeeping. They're just trying to keep up, right? There's invoices in their truck and they're under the seat and you know they're caught up in the, the toolbox and it's just hard to, to keep up. So you talk to them about marketing and you get the deer in the headlight look, like are you kidding me? Who's got time to, to market myself, right? So a lot of our contractors are in that position. So for Tumalum, what we wanted to do is, is give another kind of value added benefit of, of doing business with us. So what we do is we market our contractors through a couple different ways. One of them is through our website. So if you go to tumalum.com and you click on the inspiration gallery, you're gonna see um, galleries of our contractors and the work they do through, it's a photo gallery. And so what we've done is we've actually gone out to their job sites, we've taken pictures, 
of their projects. Some of them, a, a very small percentage of our contractors hire professional photographers to come in at the end of a project. That's a very small percentage. As you know, most contractors don't have the time, take the time, whatever that may be. So we go out and take the pictures for them, and we put it up on the Inspiration Gallery. Uh, we get a lot of visitors to our website, some that might not find, you know, John Doe contractor in Hood River, Oregon. Might not find them directly. They can find them when they go to tumalum.com. Huge, huge value in, 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 in uh, making sure that that relationship continues to be strong between the contractor and Tumalum. It's another way we're showing them that we're trying to promote you, we're solidifying that relationship. The other thing we do is we've established which of our contractors are on Facebook, on Instagram, and house. And we take their posts and we share them on ours. Our Instagram account, we have a, a, quite a large following on Instagram and Facebook also. And so when people are finding us, they're also finding our contractors because we share their work. We have a hashtag called Columbia Gorge Inspiration that we use. We have another hashtag called PNW Modern Craftsman. For those of you who don't know, PNW is Pacific Northwest. And so we tag all of those posts for our contractors with those hashtags. So we're promoting them through our platforms. I don't think there's a lot of people doing that. I'm pretty sure Home Depot doesn't do that for any of their guys. Pretty sure Lowe's isn't doing that. But we're solidifying that relationship with them, and we love doing it because our contractors, just like your contractors, they're knocking out some beautiful projects out there. Mm -hmm. And their craftsmanship is awesome. I mean, I love going to the job sites and seeing this. I want to promote them. I want to show people this. So it's a really neat platform that you can use, again, to partner with your contractor, help solidify that relationship, and kind of take it to the next level where you can promote them when they don't have the ability right now or, or, or the, um, sometimes the wherewithal even to do it. So then a step further is, we did a social media for contractors event at the beginning of this year. Invited our contractors to show up, brought some industry um, uh, speakers, so a couple guys that are in their markets, that are doing house uh, and have a website, another guy that has a great Instagram account, brought them in so they can hear from their peers. So it isn't just me talking to them. They're hearing directly from other contractors who they have a friendly, competitive relationship with that are out there saying, this is what we do. And we're showing them posts, we, got th we showed them how to get started, gave them examples of what to do. So again, just trying to create another benefit for them and show them that you know we care about you guys, we're trying to solidify that and, and trying to keep your market presence solid as well with the support of Tumalum. That's awesome. The uh, one, one thing I want to clarify as you were going through that hashtag, if you're familiar, when she says I put a whole bunch of hashtags in a comment for Instagram just for the post, blocking and tackling, people search building products, windows, decks, and that allows you to get extra traffic. So she's actually, not only is she just posting a picture, she's pro you're probably doing some before, after, stuff mm -hmm. like that, but you're also taking the you know, level two, level three of social media and getting them more, more exposure by some of the tactics that you've learned how to do. Um, now, can I confirm, some of the old guys like myself, when I was growing up, this was called the pound, the pound yes, button? Yes, yes, it's the pound button. That's the hashtag? Is, it, is this what I'm Blame it on Twitter. Twitter came and just changed it. I don't it's know always, why. It's always yeah. the tweeter. It's always, <laughs> um, so, Natalia, so what is the reaction when you show up on your contractor's job sites and say, is it okay if I take some cool photos mm -hmm. of your project to share them to help you grow your business? Are they, are they angry? Are they aggressive? <laughs> How would you describe their emotion? They're kicking me right off the job site. Like, yeah. what are you doing here? Why would I want you here, right. right? I mean, how do you think they respond? I mean, what a great opportunity for them. What a great service that we can provide for them. Who else is doing that? It's a, it's a different thing. So they're grateful that we would do that. And, it, you know, it's kind of touchy-feely. But honestly, I've had more contractors say, God, I can't believe you guys are Why? I can't believe you guys are doing this. Like, you, you're just going to come out. I don't got to pay you. You're just going to come out, bring your camera, take pictures, and you're going to put it on all your social media and your website. Yeah. Wow. Why? Thank you. Why? I mean, because that's part of that relationship thing. Oh, yeah, that relationship thing, that thing we've been talking about the last couple days. It's solidifying that relationship. It's something we want to do, and they are more than grateful. And um, as they get new projects now, 
they email me. They contact me and say, hey, we got a new project. If somebody has a photographer, they'll send me the pictures automatically through Dropbox. If they don't, you know, would you be willing to come out? Or they'll email a sales contractor and say, hey, we're almost wrapping up. Do you want to come out? Yep, let's schedule it. Let's get out there. Well, this is a win-win for you, too, because uh, you know, content, as Bradley talked about earlier, content fuels what you do on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Or what you have to say. Content's what, the, you, know, what you want to show there. Mm -hmm you being able to articulate uh, the relationship with the contractor and showing your products in action and what the end result is, that's really what the customer's buying at the end of the day. So just showing that partnership um, is, a, is a, a benefit to you guys as well. That's a great point because really putting a picture of a two by four out there, yeah, eh, please, it's not that pretty. Don't we do think that. it's pretty. I think it's beautiful, right? I mean, in our industry, we look at that and we're like, that is good looking wood, right? But most people aren't going to put a picture yeah. of a two by four and be too enhanced by that. So what you're saying is right. When you see it in practical application, it's just a great way to get the whole thing, the whole package is out there for Tumalum and its contractors. Yeah, if we can, uh, can we see if uh, have any questions? From sure. the audience? Absolutely. On this? Um, so are you engaging your employees to also drive the content for the builders? Is that how you're Well, not so much for the builders, but we are engaging the employees on, on other, uh, other levels. So in other words, we have, um, it, and this was a little slow start, but basically now that all our employees know that we're doing this, our employees will... Um, team members, by the way, if Joel Fleischman is listening to this, he hates the word employees. Okay, anyway. He'll yell, uh, he'd yell at you. He would scream at your face. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they, um, they all have my cell phone, and I encourage them, if you see something out there, take a picture of it and text it to me. You don't have to write the, the, the blurb. I'll do that. I just need, some, I need some, some content. Just you give it to me, I'll create the post. Give me a little you know, background on it. So if they see you know, got, got a contractor come in wearing our, our gear, t-shirt, hat, whatever, something like that. Or a you know, guy comes in with his kid. We had one, a guy showed up with his kid and a little like three-year-old boy puts him in a wheelbarrow and he's wheeling him around. I mean, it's great, it's cute. So somebody took a picture of it, we sent it in, it was great. It was, we got a lot of uh, reach on that because people think kids are cute, especially when they're in wheelbarrows in my local lumber yard because we like doing business with them. It's part of that, again, that brand that we're showing. So we are very engaged with our employees and having them share ideas and thoughts and because they're the eyes and ears. They're out there every single day dealing with the customer every day. I'm not, I show up occasionally as often as I can but they get to be a part of that. So it's really good to have that across the board with the company so the employees feel a part of it. And of course, you know, if they see their, their picture on Facebook, it's kind of fun too, because like, oh, I was a part of that. I, I can be a part of the marketing and the branding of this company. You know, ideally you want help from anyone you can get help from to mm -hmm. get those content pieces, right? I, I mean, that's the perfect yes. world, but the adoption process will take time to yes. do that. <laughs> um, we have a couple of clients where we've tested out an automated text message that says, take a picture of whatever you're doing right now, and it goes to every employee. And I, if 90% of them are bad, that's fine. That's fine, but maybe 10% of them are good. We just need the content, and it takes them 30 seconds. I guess one of the questions that I had was, in, in terms of getting release, is there anything that I should know about if somebody's, one of the things I've been reluctant about in getting testimonials or running testimonials or running someone's logo that is a customer of mine is, do I have permission to use that content? And if the guy in the backyard says, Lumber Buddy's the greatest thing in the world, but he doesn't own the company, am I in risk of any kind of problems with content? I would start this by saying none of us are lawyers, and you should consult <laughs> your attorney first. Um, the, the, Russ, are you a lawyer? That's what attorneys always say. Um, I don't know. I think in that instance, uh, I'll tell you what. I, Isaac, why don't you take it? There is a one-page waiver form you can create. Um, it. The, uh, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer, but at the same time, it's not used a whole lot. Uh, I think as you do this testimonial thing, I think we'll, let's tap back into the emotional side and let's make it benefit them too. So during the testimonial of you working with them, let's talk about the way, the reason that they build two by six construction versus two by four and how that benefits the homeowner and have it like a one minute testimonial and how you support and how you work together. And that's a self-serving piece of content that I doubt anybody's gonna have a problem with versus um, that's the route I would go because emotionally he wouldn't want to go to a lawyer because 
Who would? Yeah. Exactly. I did have this uh, instance as well. I did. I had talked to my client um, on my Red Angle website. I have a list of my clients and had a release. Things change. I get a call that said, "Hey, VP of Marketing mm. saw your logo up there, and that is not approved." I said, "Well, you approved it three years ago. It's not approved now." So he said, "No, not a problem. I got it down that day." So I think if you have those relationships, um, I would just be where I think your your instant might be a little bit different because you're the man. But I've heard this is hey, this is just another excuse for us not to do this. I would challenge you the video testimony, especially some of the some we, that we saw, really powerful. But uh, James got a question in the back. Really, just a comment. Um, we, we have a pretty large photo gallery on the association's website for deck builders. And one of the things you really do want to do is protect their photos. So when you put the photos up on your site and people go grab them, and next thing you know, there's a competitor website using that guy's deck promoting it. It's one of those things you just need to do to make sure you do have that language in there that protects them because it, it, it can circle back and work against you. And but, they're, uh, they're doing that without crediting you? Exactly. They're yeah, just that's taking, illegal. Uh, that, yeah. Now that, that, that you cannot do. We, we've um, had this happen multiple times where a, a, a builder will find their photos on someone else's. So that's just one of the things we kind of early on saw this problem. So you definitely want to have some type of release written by there so that they know you protect it. Could, uh, could a watermark or something be part of the solution yeah. on that? Mm -hmm. It could. That could be a, water, a watermark. Um, again, it's kind of a free-for-all out there on the Internet. I wouldn't, it wouldn't concern me too much unless you want to set up a, a, set up a way to monetize the selling of the photos or something like that. Uh, you know, anybody who's stealing somebody else's photos, it's not really a long-term strategy that's going to build relationships, so I'm not too concerned about that. But when it comes down to anything like legal-wise, or hey, you weren't supposed to use that, mm -hmm. or hey, uh, you know, we don't like that there, you just take it down. That's really 99.9% .9 of what happens right. as the worst thing. Yeah, Natalia, we talked about this just briefly yesterday, where you said, I don't know if it was the exact photo or something very similar, and I thought your, your take on it was, uh, was smart and interesting. On what specifically? <laughs> did, did anybody else miss the question here? <laughs> just guess what? Up. Fine. Maybe this is just over. Maybe this session's over. Now just, I have the deer in no, the headlights. No, you said um, Say that you smart said stuff. when yeah. you saw you went on. I don't know it was a competitor, and you said you saw something very similar that you had done, and, oh, and your thought was, "I'm all caught up now. Thank you." Okay. okay. <laughs> thought, thought we were. Thought we okay, were on the same that's way. my cue to get smart. Okay, so. Um, there's a theory, some people don't like it when people steal their ideas. I take it as a compliment. You know, to me, and I shouldn't say especially in this industry, but you know, it's no secret, this industry has been a little slow to get on the technology bandwagon, um, and, and certainly when it comes to social media. So if, you know, I follow lots of people all across the country, lumber yards. I love seeing what people are doing out there. And so if I see somebody out in New Jersey, you know, Cucan Brothers does a great job, by the way, with their social media. And I've Absolutely. followed them for several years. They're wonderful. They'll post things. They give me ideas. And I think, you know what? I'm going to see how, that, how I can make that work and, and create a relevant piece for, for Tumalum. It's not necessarily stealing it, but it kind of is. Last year, Joel Fleischman talked about copy and steal everything. Nothing wrong with that. Find something and find how it applies to your organization. If somebody finds something from Tumalum, I've seen posts out there on, on Lumberyard's Facebook pages, and I thought, I think they might have gotten that from us. Good. Great. Why not? Because as we take this industry and start raising the bar industry-wide, that helps all of us. So I have no problem with that. Now, don't you go out there and go look on Tom Lum's page and start copying everything we do. No, but honestly, it's, I think it's a compliment. So I'm good with it. Gotcha. We have a, I'm getting the, you got a time thing. Sure. You guys have one quick thing to kind of leave the audience with, if, if nothing else. Go. <laughs> go. Um, I love this industry since I've been as a 22 because of the relationships I formed at a young age. I developed a lot of nicknames that, you know, you give a younger person in an industry where there's not a whole lot of young people, but without that, it's been great. One of the best things is, again, the relationship component. This can help you do that even better. This is not taking away from the relationship. Mm -hmm. You can take this phone and within 30 seconds make somebody else feel good that you haven't seen in 10 years. Or, or you could do that 30 times in two hours. Uh, use this and go show some, some, uh, somebody that thank you. Go show somebody how much uh, you value their business. and. Uh, Mm -hmm. how much you want to help them grow. We have a great story to tell. 
love this industry. I would guess everybody sitting in this room deeply loves this industry. We have great history, great people, great stories. This is a good way to share it. Isaac, Natalia, thanks so much. Thanks for your time and attention. Appreciate it. Thank you.